All right, welcome live followers. We're getting ready to shoot episode four of the Homegirls podcast. It's gonna be water wells. So as usual, we're gonna get started with our video. And always, if you wanna actually watch the video, you can watch the replay on YouTube. Yes, on YouTube. They get their water supplied to them through a central supply system that feeds to their pipes in their house or apartment. However, for the rest of the world not hooked up to centralized water, they get their water through private or public wells. Wells are some of the most essential components to developing a sustainable society. They provide a clean and reliable supply of water for drinking, bathing, and irrigation, even in locations where water on the surface is scarce. Wells are essentially just holes in the ground filled with water, but they have more complexities than meets the eye. No. Okay. Yes, they do have more complexities than meets the eye. The video just wouldn't stop. Um, <laughs> so I like that video because it's really straightforward. Yeah, no, Tells for you sure. exactly what we're talking about today, which is wells. I like that there's an elephant drinking out yeah, of the well. Yeah, the elephant was a nice oh, addition. <laughs> I also like how it switched from like super developed water system to like a babushka getting water out of like a really traditional mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Interesting. It kind of shows you the still we have kind of like the ancient methods, which we're going to talk about. No, yeah, for use. sure. So, hi, I'm Mary. And I'm Isis. And we're the Home Girls. And today we're talking about water wells. I want everyone to raise their hand if they were personally victimized by the ring and will no longer go near water wells. Did you see the ring? Yes. I, I dressed up as, as her for Halloween once. Did you? <laughs> yeah. I... When it came out, I watched it and literally I thought I was going to die in seven days. Like the, the, so the sheer amount of terror that week that I lived through <laughs> has not been repeated since. No, that movie's actually freaky for sure. It's really scary. And like nobody uses VHS tapes anymore. So I don't know how well it's actually aged because I, I literally yeah, like never watched it again. Yeah, like how would they make that like in today's yeah. day and age? Like. But holy cow, when she climbs out of that well... It's like, nope, I'm out of here. I'm done. Mm -hmm. I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> um, I saw the Japanese version too, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, I think because I saw the American version first, the Japanese version wasn't as scary because I was ready. And yeah. also she looks normal in the Japanese version. She's just really wet. Oh, okay. She doesn't, her face isn't like all gross yeah and then when she like attacks people their faces don't get on like in the american version that girl's like yeah her face is yeah. all messed up mm -hmm. which by the way is the worst jump scare literally made me sick to my stomach <laughs> i was like what movie am i watching oh my god but yeah in the japanese version they just look scared yeah they don't have like messed up faces so anyway as the video mentioned water wells are one of the most important mechanisms for getting water in the world we're pretty spoiled with water here I have to admit, in the United States, no, yeah, for sure, we're very spoiled with water. We can always, most of us in the United States have access to water all the time, all the time, pretty much. Uh, we always joke about how gross city of Houston water is, and yeah, you really shouldn't drink it in the long term. But if you were desperate and you had to drink it, you wouldn't die immediately. Yeah. I mean, no. you wouldn't like die immediately. No, I mean, I've drinking tap water before, you know, like. very brave. <laughs> my nephews were here last week and my nephew was taking a shower or something or brushing his teeth and he got water up his nose and he was convinced the, he was going to get the brain eating aniba, which is in our water system, by the way, people, but you don't get it from drinking. Yeah. But it does, it does, you can get it if it goes up your nose. Oh, yeah. that's funny. I know that's <laughs> terrifying. Um, but yeah, water, you know, brain eating and even aside, we're still pretty lucky with water. We can get water whenever we want. No, oh, yeah. But even in this country, approximately 43 million people rely on water wells. Did you know that? 43 no. million. There's about 325 million people in the United States. So 43 million is a pretty, you so know. It's a good little chunk. It's a good little chunk. Yeah. Um, it's definitely not the majority, but that is still a lot of people who rely on No, that's on still a lot of people. Millions. Well water. So like millions of people yeah, are still using water wells, so. Um, water wells also have a rich folklore. I mean, there's a lot of stories around water wells, people getting pushed in water wells, water wells having fairies in them mm -hmm. or making a wish on a water well. Um, I'm still terrible. I guess I, I just, I'm too scared to even make wishes in them anymore. Honestly. No, yeah. Like I'm, I'm, if I see an old fashioned well, I'm staying far away from it. Far away from it. <laughs> um, we take water wells and water in general for granted, but as we'll learn, we're all just on the brink of dehydration. It's true. True. <laughs> true. We're all going to be like Dune. Did you see Dune? 
Oh, no, I haven't seen Dune. Okay. I was talking about it yesterday with my sister, actually. Yeah, so it's a slow burn. So be prepared for that. Don't think it's going to be like action packed. Yeah. It's kind of like made in the old like 80s movie kind of way where there's just like this slow moving plot. Mm -hmm. But overall, it's very good. Anyway, we're going to end up like that planet Arrakis in Dune, where it's just a desert. Yeah, Yeah. just full desert. Yeah. And then when people die, they like milk their dead bodies for water. That's our future. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. That's brutal. (laughs) I know. It's very brutal. Anyway... I hope I didn't give away too many spoilers there. <laughs> uh, honestly, if you have any Dune It's spoil- been out for a while. Okay, like, yeah, no. First of all, the book's been out since like the 70s. So oh, yeah, at this okay. point, we're well past spoilers. Yeah, no, I feel for like. sure. But, uh, Timothy Chalamet. Yeah, that's exactly why we were talking about that movie. <laughs> He's so over- fine boned. It's like you could break him if you hugged him. Mm-hmm. He would just snap like a baby. <laughs> a very, very fine boned man. Okay. Um, oh, speaking of which, he's very good in The King on Netflix. Oh, really? Yeah. It's about Henry V excellent movie he's Ooh, very good in it okay. yeah he's really good in it. um and also he's weirdly attractive that's exactly <laughs> why we were talking about him that's because like we were talking about how like guys have a thing for ryan reynolds you know and like my sister was like and girls have a thing for timothy Chalamet, Chalamet. <laughs> however you say his weird name and yeah. tom holland is very like fine boned yeah, and yeah. petite little man <laughs> um that was a huge digression <laughs> but Let's dive in to the history of Wells. No pun intended. Yes, yes. Um, Wells date back to the Neolithic era, era, which is a long, like a freaking long time ago. That's like 10,000 BCE. Like Jesus. a really, really, really long time ago. Yeah. Um, the oldest reliably date, dated well is in Cyprus. Um, and it, it's at the site, and I'm going to say this wrong, Kisonerga Milokuthia. I don't speak good Greek, but that is the name of the site where they found the oldest recorded well. I feel like that is a stretch, but whatever. It's the oldest one they found anyway, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, It was about 26 feet in depth. So, I mean, that, and they estimated it about 8,400 BCE. So people were digging 26 feet deep. That's That's deep. That is a pretty deep well for that long time ago. The first stoned line well is 18 feet deep, about 7,000 BC. And it's at what's called, uh, I'm going to say this wrong because it's Israeli, Atli Yam, I think. It's off the coast of modern Haifa in Israel. So obviously these aren't like the only wells, but these are the ones we can like really pinpoint, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, Woodline wells were much more common. So the stone line well is pretty prestigious. That means someone put a lot of thought into it. They believe that prior to that, it was either like packed dirt or a woodline well. Um, and they find the oldest uh, example of that they can find is in the Czech Republic. And it only dates to 5265 uh, 5, BCE. And the reason they think that that was the norm, even though I know the stone line well is older, um, because access to stone stone would have been more expensive you would have had to carve it out it would have just been easier to make a wood lined well no for sure um there's also one in austria that dates to 5200 bce with wood line as well so very very old wells china also had apparently quite a bit of wells so this is another example of things that people build at the same time without ever talking to each other um we kind of talked we talked about that a few times yeah yeah um so there's quite a few uh ancient wells found in china um there's a chinese text called the book of changes which dates from um 1046 to 771 bce describes how the ancient chinese maintained and protected their wells um there's a well in it's again i apologize to any chinese people listening uh hemadu um, it was encased by four rows of logs with a square frame attached to it at the top of the well. And 60 additional tile wells southwest of Beijing are also believed to have been built around 600 BC for drinking and irrigation. So the Chinese had wells. It looks like from the date that the Chinese were doing wells a little bit later than the Europeans. Yeah. But again, we can't really prove that. Yeah. Right? I feel like it'd be hard to. So. In Egypt, oh my gosh, are you watching Moon Knight on Disney Plus? No. Oh my gosh. I need to borrow someone's Disney Plus. <laughs> yes. First of all, the first episode is garbage. Can be like, what's going on? Oh, okay. That, I've all, heard those, it's good. all the shows are like um, that on Disney Plus. Yeah, no, the first sure. episode's always garbage. Yeah. But it's about ancient Egypt. So I'm just like, did, Ooh. did you know that I wanted to be an Egyptologist? Oh, really? 
Ooh. Total nerd. This is like going back to kindergarten. Yeah. I wanted to be an Egyptologist. That's crazy. It turns out there's no really no such thing as Egyptology anymore. <laughs> 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 kind of died in like the 40s yeah. or something. Uh, you can, it, I think they offer the degree in like actual Egypt and like in parts of Europe, yeah. but you can't really find one in oh, wow. the United States anymore. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I never became an Egyptologist. Wow. Yeah. Okay. You also have to learn like Egyptian, Heratic and Arabic, which is a lot of, it's a lot of work. No, for sure. But anyway, watch Moon Knight. It's about ancient Egypt. Okay. I'm obsessed with it. I actually, a Dune connection because the Duke Latrades from Dune is the Moon Knight. Oh, yes. wow. That's crazy. Yeah. So okay, I'm going to full I'm circle to, now. I, I've seen things about it. Uh, so I'm going to have to give it a shot. Yeah. It's like actually really intense for a Disney show. Mm-hmm. It like the, we watched the fourth or fifth episode. It was like really violent and scary. And I'm like, what? This is not a children's show. Oh my God. Yeah. There's like a monster. Ooh. Anyway. Um, so ancient Egypt, as we know, is a very, uh, it's ahead of its time in every aspect of the ancient world, right? It lasted for about 4,000 years and because it was basically protected by desert. And as a result, they're building some pretty cool wells. Um, they built, the ancient Egyptians built two types of wells called a Shaduf and a Sakia. And again, probably saying that wrong. A Sakia can bring up water from a depth of 10 meters versus the three meters of the Shaduf. Um, so they, some of the oldest wells, uh, they're finding are from 7,000 to 8,500 uh, BCE. So pretty old. Yeah. That's very wells. old. <laughs> yeah. Now the interesting thing is they're finding historical, um, evidence of wells that weren't water wells, you know, wells, is kind of like an all encompassing term. Mm-hmm. So the interesting thing is the first recorded salt well was actually dug in the Sichuan province of China around 2,250 years ago. Um, so it's a saltwater well and it was applied to, um, actually get like salt so they could use it. Yeah. Um, which is very interesting. Also, China had the first known oil well, and it was drilled Ooh. in 347 Common Error. So, I mean, that's um, still really, really old. That's a really long time ago. 347 years after the birth of what we would consider Jesus Christ is what they, yeah. they usually cut it off. Uh, so in the modern times, um, that's crazy, though. No, yeah, that is crazy. It was dug up. Listen to this, though. It was dug up to depths of 790 feet. And the Jesus. drill bits, I know, the drill bits were made using like um, like wooden or stone bit, bits attached to bamboo poles. That is some crazy wow. nonsense. Yeah. Some dedication. I know. <laughs> and by the 10th century in China, they actually had a pipeline that connected oil wells to other parts of China. A bamboo pipeline. That's crazy. Isn't that Jesus. nuts? Jesus. It, it makes you wonder if they were arguing about oil pipelines as much as we argue about oil pipelines. <laughs> so uh, the Japanese also did this as well. The Japanese probably learned this from the Chinese. There was probably a little bit of inner trade going on. Yeah. The Japanese called it, uh, the word for petroleum at that time in Japanese was burning water. Burning water. Which makes sense. Yeah. So, And then basically the idea of wells didn't change until... The 19th century so pretty much wow that's the a long idea, time yeah the idea of how to make a basic well does not change until the 19th century wow i know but it makes sense right i mean think about the way wells were used it was not only the center of a community every like mm-hmm. so your castle would have the well or there'd be a well in the Times square yeah. um if you had an evading army they would poison the well which could like ruin a community and you know how you usually poison a well it's usually you put like a dead animal or like a horse in it. oh really or a person Ooh. Put a person in it because then all the bacteria and stuff. yeah people usually think like oh they poured poison in the well no it usually involved like just dumping something dead in it that's cr- that's too easy. Like, yeah, it's all too animal. easy, which makes sense. It's it really explains why our modern wells, as you'll talk about, are so enclosed because you don't want dead things getting in yeah. your well. So the deepest hand dug well in the world is in Brighton, East Sussex. That's England. It's called the Woodingding Well, and it's one thousand two hundred eighty-five feet deep, and it's as deep as the Empire State Building. Oh my God! It was hand dug. How? That's so, crazy. I know. That must have taken a long time. Like. Work begins in on the Wooding Well about March of 1858. 
It was dug 24 hours a day for four years. Jesus. Yeah. Diggers dug by candlelight. What? And uh, someone actually died when they fell into the well. Of course. Yes. They finally reached water. So it starts in March of 1858. In March of 1862, which is very poetic, they finally reach water. Um, So it does take four years, 24 hours a day. At the bottom of the well, the bricklayer noticed that the ground he was standing, so they were going to brick the bottom, right? But they noticed that the ground was being um, pushed up, like some gas was building up. So Mm -hmm. they evacuated the well, which was only four feet wide. So they had some skinny men. They had some skinny men in that well. Oh, yeah. It took 45 minutes to reach the top of the well. Because it's as deep as the Empire State Building. Oh, my God. And they, it was a ladder. So you had to do a ladder to go down, a ladder to come up. And um, so essentially, they didn't know what it, what it was. But when they evacuated, it was the water that was pushing up. They thought it was like a gas explosion, but it was water. It was, it was where they struck oh. water. Um, so it still exists. You can actually still see it in um, East Sussex. It's... And the entrance of the Nuffield Hospital, in case wow. you're ever in East Sussex. Where is that? Like, It's in England. Okay, I figured. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's like Prince Henry and Meghan Markle are the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Oh, so technically, okay. it's their well, I guess. I Interesting. They, they revoked their right to that yeah, well. Yeah, they did. <laughs> so the first successful hand-drilled well in the United States actually occurs occurs earlier than that in 1808 so woodingdon is the deepest Mm -hmm. but we were obviously were hand drilling well before that the united states gets their first hand drilled well in 1808 okay this is the beginning of the hand drilled wells in the united states wells that were not dug um by just on the shallow you know naturally sunk wells it was uh his name was ruffner the ruffner brothers at great buffalo lick near charleston west virginia it was drilled for the brine water that existed below the mire and quicksand that sat on the surface. The well was created by using a four foot in diameter, diameter hollow sycamore tree, which was sawed off squarely and placed in the mire. And mire is just like goopy muck. Mm-hmm. Uh, the tree was set up right embraced. A platform was built and buckets used to acquire the water from where it lay. Although the water was involved, the principal goal was actually to uh, like mine salt. So, in the 1820s and 1830s is when the game changer happens. And honestly, that Woodingdon well was dug in 1858, so maybe someone just didn't tell these guys. But in the 1820s and 1830s, you get uh, experimentation start to be happening with the idea of a boring machine. So, I don't know what they were doing in East Sussex, but there was definitely a boring machine they could have used, and they didn't. They hand dug this nonsense. So... These machines were used to cut through soil and rock. They allowed for the wells to be drilled deeper and to provide water without risk of contamination. Because you know when a well is shallow, it's more likely to be contaminated. Mm -hmm. So the deeper the well, hypothetically, the cleaner it is. Yeah. It also allowed well water to be put into pipes. And these pipes, these early pipes, would have been made out of steel or wood. In 1870, cable tool rigs came to the forefront of well drilling. So this is the technological, you know revolution here the industrial revolution excuse me yeah um these used eight to ten foot samson posts connected to a walking beam and a central pivot pivot which moved freely to drill in 1884 a standardization occurred um specifying the exact dimensions that should be used to drill wells so we're moving pretty fast at this point we had like thousands of years of no improvement and then they just and then it's just just moving on in 1908, saw the inter- introduction of the roller cone bit for rotary drilling, which is that like, kind of what we see drills today is that rotary drill. Yeah. Um, and then well drilling was platform based until the advent of portable tools in the 1940s with the introduction of internalized power sources, giving water well drilling the tools it currently uses. Isn't that crazy? So uh, the technology, technology kind of advances into the 1940s and then we're like, all right, well, we figured it out. We can just drill wells. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, So, obviously, originally in the 1890s, they were using um, steam power, which would have been like coal or um, usually superheated water through coal. Uh, Eventually, they used the internal combustion engine. And um, now we use some type of, usually it's like a gas run drill. That's the idea. Yeah. So, isn't that 
What a story. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a that's lot. That's actually a lot. I wasn't expecting that much. I mean, obviously, there's a lot more well history. No, I'm sure there is. I'm sure there, it's that it Woodingdon deep. well freaks me out. It's really deep. 45 minutes to climb to the bottom and climb to the top. Pass. Hard pass. I wouldn't even want to look inside. Like, what if I get pushed? You know, like, I, well, one dude did. <laughs> exactly. One dude did. And he that's did scary. not come back to tell what it was like. So yeah, that's, that's scary. Hard pass on the Woodingdon well. All right. That's terrifying. Yeah. Your turn. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. So I'm, I'm just going to talk about what is a water well. Some. What was I'm going to mute that. It's a computer. Oh. I will edit this out. Somebody <laughs> gets their text messages. Yeah. So anyways, so I'm going to talk about what is a water well, some pros and cons of, of having a water well, and then also like maintaining your water well. Because there's, there's maintenance, of course. <laughs> um, so, of course. <laughs> a water well is a private water source taken directly from the earth. Um, and, of course, it's made by, like, drilling a hole into the ground down to the aquifer, um, which is a permeable layer of rock that contains water. And then a pump system is then used to carry that water up and into your home. Unlike tap water, which comes from, like, the general like water supply that pretty much, like, probably we all have if we live here. In like, Houston. In, inside Houston. Actually, I'll get, I have numbers for how Ooh, many people have water wells okay. in Harris County, yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's cool. Um, but well water is not treated with chemicals like chlorine or chloram chloramines, is that how you say it? To filter out bacteria and microorganisms. Instead, it is naturally filtered by the layers of rock and soil that it passes through, though it's not guaranteed to be bacteria-free. Proper sealing, sufficient filtration, and a slow travel time between the aquifer and the ground surface can go a long way toward pre preventing any bacterial contamination. Um, yeah, so if you purchase a home with a water well, you need to be diligent about doing an annual check for bacteria. Mm -hmm. And this test is easy and cheap, and you can even do it on your own. Like, you don't have to, like... I'm going to talk about it, some of the shit that can literally shit that can get into your water well. Yeah, that's so scary. That's the only thing about it that's scary to me. Like, I can never. So my uncle's, it wasn't a water well, it was lake water. And they were like, don't drink the water. You you can't drink the water because it comes in directly. They used to live on Lake uh, great one of the great lakes mm -hmm. and I did. And it was the middle of the night and I was so thirsty and I just put my head under the tap and I drank. It literally not pretty yeah. <gasps> it messed you up it messed me up oh my i was God. like 10 years old i thought i was gonna die they did tell me they did warn me yeah that's scary what the heck um okay but yeah let's talk about some pros and cons so pros of having a water well no water bill is this true i was like do you get a water bill if you have a water well no right? you wouldn't but i mean because you're not hooked up to like the local so you still supply. need electricity to pump well, it. yeah for sure for so sure. i think my I need to ask. Next time I go to Conroe, I'll ask them because all the people at Keller yeah. and Conroe are living on water wells. I'll ask them if like it make like the difference in electric bill is, yeah. is big. Oh, because I'm sure it, the electric bill would be higher. Yeah, because okay. sometimes your pump yeah, is running. Yeah, because that's what I was reading. It was like no water bill because you're not hooked up to a local water supply. So there's like no middleman, you know, between you and your house's water. So... I mean, that can be a good or bad thing, I guess. Yeah, well. It depends on the electric bill. Yeah. <laughs> um, no worry about service di disruptions, because, you know, sometimes, like... Unless it, the power goes out. Oh, and so, so if the power like, goes out, then you're screwed. Yeah, when it froze, okay. a bunch of people's pumps stopped working because they're connected to electricity. Yeah. And you want... And I'm going to give a spoiler, but you should always have a generator on your water okay. well. Okay. Yeah. So then if the power does go out. You can keep getting. Okay. So, yeah. so okay. So that's a real flaw since we're not doing the bucket yeah. in the water well anymore. It's all electric. It's all just down there pump. like yeah. being pumped. You need a source of power. Yeah. So if you have a generator, then, you know, it's not common for like your town or city's water to be cut off, but it's possible. So if like, if there's a natural disaster or other emergency that could lead to the water being shut off. You might not be affected. Yeah, as long as you have a generator. Yeah, or as long as you have a generator. Um, yeah, another pro is that you already know the water is good for you, but well water is thought to be particularly beneficial health-wise. They can be. Yeah, since depending it's, on where it's uh, coming since from. Since there's no chemicals. And, Unless you and live whatnot. in Texas, and we'll talk yeah. about that. Yeah, and full of minerals right from the ground. Um, and you Maybe know, if you live in Wyoming. 
<laughs> and then another one these pros are not that great honestly no. you know exactly not for where, texas yeah not for texas you know exactly where your water is coming from um there's a lot of peace of mind that can come with sourcing water from a well on your property since there's no like worry about where the water's traveling through what it went through before it got to your tap and stuff like that but I don't know. I'm not yeah. convinced. Yeah, I'm not convinced either. <laughs> I'm not convinced. Um, so some cons. Um, it might stain or have an odor. The high yes. mineral content in well water may have some unpleasant side effects, notably a slightly sulfurous taste and odor and staining properties due to elevated levels of iron. Mm -hmm. um, there are filtration systems you can add to your property to help with this, but uh, I don't know how well that, know. that would work, I honestly. I don't know. Um, it relies on electricity, like we said. Yeah. So that's a con. It's bad enough that you lose internet when your power goes out, but water too. Um, yes, private wells rely on electricity to pump groundwater to the surface. And if you lose electricity, you lose the ability to pump water as well. For this reason, it's recommended that you have a backup source of electricity on hand yep. with a well, such as an emergency generator or even a solar panel, solar power. Yeah, a solar panel would be great, actually. Yeah. Because um, that's even more efficient than a generator. Because the generator, you have to have gas. Yeah, yeah. Um, another con, it's a responsibility. So got to maintain it. <laughs> well, being off the grid with the, your water supply does mean no water bill. It also means that it's up to you to resolve and pay for any maintenance or repairs that your well requires. Yeah. And then, of course... Uh, there is a risk of contamination. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the lack of chemical treatment with uh, well water can both be a blessing and a curse. Though when bacteria-free water from well uh, from wells is presumed to be healthier than other water sources, there is an inherent risk of contamination from uh, pollutants making their way into your well or pump system. Um, apparently in Mississippi, where more than 90% of inhabitants rely on groundwater, the Environmental Protection Agency estimates that more than 20% have shallow water wells that produce water with undrinkable levels of nitrate. Well, it is Mississippi. Yeah. And they're in, they are on like marshy bog mm -hmm. in general. Mm -hmm. So if your well is deep into the aquifer, well maintained and regularly tested, you should be fine. But yeah. So then maintaining, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Don't know. What is the uh, the motto, state motto of like Alabama is like, well, at least we're not Mississippi or something like that. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> I got to look that joke up. I'll do that while you Yeah, do. that's funny. All right. So maintaining a water well. If you do decide to purchase a home with a private well system, then it's important to know what you'll need to do as a homeowner to keep your well and your water supply in tip top shape. Um, so you got to test your water at least once a year. Having well water tested annually is key so that you can be sure there's no bacterial contamination. Um, testing will also cue you into things like iron and sulfide levels, as well as your water's hardness, all of which can dictate which added systems you need in place. It is Alabama. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't feel, I don't think that's their official state motto, but that is like their unofficial. At least we're not Mississippi. Mississippi. Yeah. So sorry if you're from Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Oh my god. Yikes. Um, they say that you should also have your well professionally inspected once a year. In addition to testing the water, you also want the well itself to have an annual inspection. Any damage or irregularities in the structure of the well or the pump can lead my hands are dry. <laughs> can lead to contamination. And it's a lot more cost effective to pay for an annual inspection than to pay for heavy repairs or replacements. Yeah, so we'll talk more about yeah. that. Um, and then apparently, um, water wells have a water softener. They can. So it's optional. It's like an optional thing. Yeah. Well, you can have a water softener on your tap water. Oh, really? Too. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. No. Interesting. I don't like it. It makes it, have you ever taken a shower and it's been like slimy? That's usually from a water oh, softener. Oh, interesting. Yeah. They have to do that in Ohio because the water is so hard. It oh, can really? like really damage your pipes and a couple yeah. other things. I don't really understand the specifics of plumbing in Ohio, but everyone in my family has one. And whenever I go there and shower, I'm like, is my hair? You feel like, slimy. <laughs> yeah. Like when you're trying to rinse your hair, you're like, it's not rinsing. I can oh, get the shampoo out, but it's because really? it's like, oh, wow. It just feels slimy. That's you know? crazy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, maintain your water softener if you have one. Many homes with private, well, with private wells also have water softeners, which use salt to help filter out minerals so you get pure water for drinking, cleaning, cooking, and doing laundry. Yeah. You'll need to check the salt level in your water softener once a month and to refill the salts as needed when they run low. 
basically this is just maintenance city yeah so if the country life is calling you then you're probably going to end up having a water well if yeah. you live out in the country and i want you to consider that you're probably gonna have a septic system too yes so yes. don't think living off the grid means you're like out in paradise you might be overflowing in poop water and drinking poop water yeah that's scary yeah i, I honestly i would rather be in the city that's honestly a same um, i could probably do a septic system i could not do a water well yeah i'm sorry I saw a funny tweet that was like, why is everyone always trying to survive during the apocalypse? I would just pass away. It's like, <laughs> like <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I'm out. <Bye. laughs> well, water's not coming I'm back. Not, All right. Well, I'm not trying to deal with this. The piece. end of the line for me. <laughs> right. If there's like a zombie apocalypse. Like, just take me. <laughs> Seriously, though. Just bite me. Terrifying. <laughs> so water wells super common in texas yeah very very common in texas we have over a million water wells here in texas jesus which, that's a lot yeah when you consider there's 43 million total we have a good chunk of the water wells in harris county there are 7,014 domestic water wells wow i wouldn't think that there would be that many that's a lot that's I mean, well yeah also harris county is humongous that's true humongous that's true i went to san antonio like a few years ago and i was like everything is so close like yeah it's weird <laughs> harris county is humongous but that is still a lot of water wells considering a big chunk of harris county is houston so it's still yeah. quite a bit no quite yeah. a bit of water wells um so you mentioned aquifers there's actually two type of aquifers Ooh, did you okay. read that um no i didn't there is the what we call an aquifer yeah, and then the aquifer. what we call a confined aquifer Ooh. and a confined aquifer is also known as artisanal well have you ever heard that before mm. it's artisanal water yeah i've heard artisanal uh, yeah. for sure yeah so basically a regular aquifer is not under pressure and a confined aquifer or artisanal well is under pressure so it's a gusher oh, so okay, if you okay. hit it it's going to be like one of those old-timey oil movies where it like comes spitting out of the earth yeah so in the state of texas uh, and by the way, aquifers come from um, underground. Yeah, they're they're, in they're the deep ground. underground. So in the state of Texas, there are nine major and twenty one minor aquifers. We got a lot of water, a lot of water. Yeah, I'll say this though, they're running out. Are they big? Because like it doesn't sound like that much, you know, like thirty. Here's the picture. So oh. um, actually, we they are pretty big. We're on we're in this yellow one, which is called the Gulf Coast uh aquifer so you can see kind of just stretches the entire yeah. gulf coast there are parts of texas as you can see that have no aquifers so there are empty parts of texas the panhandle is part of what's called the ogallala aquifer and ogallala. it is the largest aquifer in the united states oh yes wow did That's you crazy. did you have to take geography unfortunately i did they did they talk um, about the ogallala aquifer honestly they probably did but geography <laughs> was not my strong suit same, same. <laughs> i just remember learning about it and then them saying like it's um running out of water it's yeah. the largest aquifer but it's running out of water and the thing to consider with aquifers is that hypothetically our groundwater should be replenishing the aquifers but when you're using the water faster than the groundwater can replenish because remember the ogallala stretches through all that land that's in drought that's been in drought mm-hmm so the groundwater is just not being replenished because we've been in a drought for what a decade now not in houston obviously yeah, but like we're chilling over here yeah the re every time they're like there's a drought i'm like um really <laughs> okay it just rained it, it's, like... it's rained every day for the last five years yeah. um so but yeah no there is a drought it is a legitimate drought and um it, it because of that the aquifers are going away Oh no. Yeah. It's kind of sad and scary at the same that time. That is sad and scary. For yeah. Sure. So, um, the aquifer basically, um, it, the, the science is pretty of the same idea. We still do bore holes. So they're still using that rotating bore. Mm -hmm. We mentioned drill that bores into the ground there. It's going to place a lead pipe, a lead pipe, a large pipe into the bore hole called a casing pipe. And then a drop pipe is ca placed in the casing pipe and the pump is attached to the drop pipe. So when the pump moves, um, it pumps the water up to the surface. It's a very, very basic concept. And it's a little bit more technical than what I just described, but those are the basic yeah. parts. Your water, um, so how you actually get your water can happen a couple different ways. You can, um, the water can be sent to a pressure tank or a storage mm -hmm. tank, or it can go directly into your house. Oh. So okay. for a residential, now remember water, uh, did you know a majority of the water wells that are uh, in Houston, or excuse me, in Texas, are actually industrial water wells. 
Oh, so they're not residential. They're not residential. Oh. So that 7,000 number I gave you is the residential well. There's also a lot more industrial wells. Wow. And in Texas... What are industrial wells like used for? Like For cows and for oil and gas, oh, for fracking, because okay. okay. you need water for fracking. That makes sense. And you okay. need water for your cows. Of course. Because apparently they just like water suckers. You need so much water for cattle. It's insane. It's it's That's why they say that... Um, you probably heard this, that... Um, the reason we should all go vegan is cattle is like, they're so bad for the environment. Oh, cause they, okay. they produce a lot of methane. Yes. Mm -hmm. But also they drink a lot of water. Mm -hmm. So, uh, big, those big cattle ranches just use so much water. Oh my God. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's yeah. crazy. So, uh, for residential wise though, some people have storage tanks where their water will go into a tank. And then every time they turn a faucet, they're actually getting water from the tank not from the well. But what happens if you have like a family of five and everyone's taking a shower and you're also doing the laundry and running the dishwasher. So your tank might run out of water, right? In that case, the pump will turn on and actually pump directly out of the well into your house. So you can do that. There are also some houses where the pump does just send water directly into the house. It doesn't go into a tank. Mm. So it really depends on how your water, uh, how your well like water is, or your well is designed. Um, no, don't do that. The tank is also pressurized, so um, it has to sit at a certain pressure to be healthy. I can't really remember what the pressure is. It sounds so complicated. It like. is very complicated. <laughs> you know, I'm not like I'm not a fan. Not yeah, a fan. me either. I'm, not a, I'm not a fan as well. Yeah. The big thing to know is that your aquifer, your regular aquifer, is much more shallow, whereas your confined aquifer is much deeper. Your okay, artesanal so the, well okay. is So the deeper. confined one is really deep yes. down. Yes, and that's okay. why it's, pre like, that explains the pressure. There's a lot of pressure. There's okay. a lot of pressure. So that's why when you hit it, it, like, spews. Um, look at this diagram. Why'd they have to use the creepy well? Use the creepy I well. Know. Why'd they have to do that? Oh, okay, like, I see. Yeah, triggered. I'm triggered by the creepy well. <laughs> There's also other ways, like you mentioned, there are other ways to get water you can use engine powered pump jacks which is like an industrial engine mm -hmm. you can use windmills oh yeah you didn't mention windmills did yeah you? i did not mention it. you can also use solar pumps what were solar solar panels. power yeah uh electric that's cool. what you did mention yeah, yeah i did mention those the windmill you've seen these it looks like this you've seen this yeah of course the windmill is ubiquitous to texas you see them all over the ranches yes, in west texas you do you grew up in laredo you probably they probably have a couple of these oh yeah on the drive to Houston, I'm pretty sure I see I see them. Yeah, that's For usually sure. um, in rural rural areas. That's how they're getting the cattle water out with the, the windmill. windmill. Yeah, so the windmill is the same exact idea as the electric, except it's the wind powering the pump. Yeah, the rotation of the windmill is powering the pump instead of you know an electric mm -hmm. source pushing the pump up and down. Uh, and, and like I said, usually see this for cattle more than residential. Okay. Although back in the olden days, which really wasn't too long ago in Houston, it's like 1920, uh, there were some, still some residential wells that would have been with the windmill. windmill. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. So you mentioned, uh, a little bit, a little bit of maintenance, Yeah. but let me tell ya, let me tell ya. There is more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so as Easy's mentioned, the water well should be tested at least once a year. Mm -hmm. And that is because they get contaminated really, really easily. We like it kind of you kind of think like, well, it'll never happen to me. Nobody. I'm pretty sure it's happening to all of us in real time. Like everyone has a contaminated well of some sort, especially in Harris County, because when it floods, the flood water will get into your well and contaminate it. Wow. I didn't think about that, but that's so true. Yeah. Like so well should have a well cover or a well cap and you want to make sure that they're on. So you should go out in your yard and check it. Wells are large enough that a toddler could fall down into them. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. scary. <laughs> Did you ever hear the case of baby Jessica falling down into the no. well? I think this was 1986. Uh -huh. Well before you are you or I. Yeah, yeah. Um, and baby Jessica was a toddler who fell down into a well into the the borehole and it, I, when i say it can fit a toddler it just fits a toddler like yeah so she yeah. was probably like this mm -hmm. you know like Tight. smushed yeah um and uh she was there for three days oh my god well they and they did they did rescue her but it made national news i mean imagine she like, was she was good yes yeah, she was well i mean she's still alive I mean, but she, like she survived, she survived for three days three little people tend days. to uh be more resilient three days yeah in the well that's terrifying Pinch. like oh my god terrifying uh anyway she lived 
But it was like national news, like 24 hour news coverage. Oh my God. Like the OJ Simpson. And like they just didn't know she was in the well. Oh no, they did. They took them three days to get her out. Oh. Once she fell in, it took them three days to get her out. I thought like, oh, like they were just looking no, for her like, these oh, whole three baby days. Jessica, yeah. The hound dog found her in the well. Yeah. No, she was there for three days while they were like trying to get her out. How did they get her out? Um, Let's look it up. Yeah, I'm so right. curious. Like baby Jessica. Poor baby Jessica. I know. That's so scary. Ba- fell, fell in the well. All right. She fell in a well in her aunt's backyard. And look at that. It, Midland, it, Texas. Okay. <laughs> at the, oh, she wasn't three. She was 18 months. <gasps> Holy cow. So she was cow. a baby. And it was 18, uh, 1987. Not, I, was, okay. I was off by a, by a year. By year. Yeah. It took them 56 hours to rescue her from the eight inch well casing. And she fell approximately 22 feet below grade. Baby Jessica needs therapy. Holy 22 shit. 22 feet? Baby eight Jessica. Eight inches? That's I how wide like, it was? Like eight inches wide? Like I feel like I need to hug her. This poor girl. She's um, like a baby baby. Like barely a one year old. Like, oh my God. Scary. So I thought I knew. Okay. So basically it occurred in Midland where firemen and police developed a plan to drill a parallel shaft to the well where Jessica was lodged and drill another horizontal cross tunnel to rescue her. Enlisting the help of local drillers, they hoped to free her before discovering that the well was surrounded by rock. Then they had to jack uh, that they tried to jackhammer. It. it didn't work. And finally they got a mining engineer to come out and water jet cut um the rock which is what they use for fracking now oh my god yes i'm a like ro- shocked jesus it gets crazier a roofing contractor ron short volunteered to go down the shaft he had been born without collarbones and could collapse his shoulders to work in tight spaces <laughs> they actually oh considered god. it but a paramedic ended up doing it he was able to inch his way into the tunnel wrestle jessica free um Oh my God, it gets even worse. She was pinned with one leg up against her face. She was in like the most uncomfortable position too. Wow. I'm literally, I need to go lay down. That is traumatic. That's so traumatic. I, I don't really like, so bad. Poor baby Jessica. So this is why you need your, your well cap. <laughs> Holy <laughs> that's, crap. That's terrifying. That's crazy. It was such a big deal that Ronald Reagan made a speech about it wow yeah um look oh that's her with george bush she went to the white house to meet george bush um abc made a made for tv movie about her and she appeared in may 2007 usa today ranked her as number 22 in the list of 25 lives of indelible impact this poor girl made a stupid mistake so she did lose her toes due to gangrene. Uh, she carries a scar on her forehead. Um, and she had 15 surgeries and she does not remember anything that happened. That's good. Yeah. She I'm was glad. little. She was little tiny. No, she was really baby. Yeah. So that's oh my good. God. The guy that rescued her, the paramedic, ended up killing himself from PTSD <gasps> as related to the rescue. Jesus. This oh, is that's a dark brutal. story. That's, wow, this got very dark very quick. <laughs> um... She has two children. She's still married to her husband. She got married in 2006. She had a boy and a girl. And um, she got, wow. This is a happy ending for her. Okay, good. When she she turned 25 in March 26 of 2011, she received a trust fund composed of donations from around the world, which she discussed using for her children's college and which she used to purchase her home less than two miles from the well in which she fell. Oh, full circle. I'm glad things ended up working out for her. She deserves Jesus, it. What she deserves a story. After that traumatic event, she deserves it. So I didn't. I honestly had no idea the baby Jessica story was that intense. Yeah, that's super intense. Yeah, that's terrifying. All right, well that's the show. I can't talk anymore. I, I need to go recover. From I can't. Baby be- Jessica. I can't imagine like her parents like the the fear. Like. So apparently the stress. They ended up divorcing. Wow. Yeah, 1990. Yeah. That's crazy. Anyway, so you want your well cover and well cap because remember I said animals, if they yeah, die in the well. Yeah. So it's not just your children. If skunks or possums or raccoons or even dogs or cats 
fall in the well and die, it's going to ruin your whole well. You basically have to take the whole apparatus <gasps> out and replace it. The water's contaminated. It's a huge mess. Yeah. But that is not the only thing that contaminates your well. Remember, if you have a well, you probably have a septic system, right? Your septic system needs to be 50 feet away from your well because your septic system can leach into your well. And that's, that's poop the poop water. water. You're going to get the poops from drinking the poop water or die. Either way, it's gonna be awful. That's disgusting. But that's not it. Oh no. Paint, fertilizer, pesticide, and car oil can also be pushed into your well because of rain and stuff. There's too many factors. Too many. <laughs> Baby Jessica getting hit by the poop water. I can't do it. I, I couldn't do it either. I'm like, I there's too it. much. Like I can't there's do it. too many concerns. So the way to prevent runoff is grading. You wanna make sure that okay. the grading around your well is done properly so you don't get any poop water but that's not it we live in texas and anyone who listens to the show knows that when you live in texas you are taking your life into your own hands <laughs> when <Yeah>. it comes <laughs> to well water in texas there are three main sources of danger oil and gas especially fracking which leases leaches all sorts of terrible chemicals and poisons Agriculture, so pesticide runoff and cow poop gets into water wells. And finally, arsenic, which is naturally occurring in yeah. the state of Texas. And I think we've talked we about, talked this, about this, this before. So um, the fracking happens basically because um, they have to go really deep for fracking, yeah. right? And they go through the groundwater layer to get deep enough to leach the petroleum. And because they're through the groundwater layer, when a fracking pipe fractures, it can leak contaminants or oil and gas petroleum product basically into the groundwater. And then that can go into your well water. That's scary. I'm still not recovered from the baby Jessica thing, to be I honest. Know. There's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot. Um, cows. People are, listening with water wells can be like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> We're moving. You're probably fine, but. <laughs> um, so nitrate contamination comes from agricultural pesticides, but also cow poop. Um, very, very common. You can actually kind of see a map here. Yeah. We do have very high levels in Texas. Yeah, we do. Even in, <laughs> especially in the Houston area. Look at that. Not as bad as Kansas. And what is that one? What is that one? Is that Missouri? Uh, I, I, I can never tell. Like those. I said, geography. <laughs> I can never tell those not, middle states. It's not my strong suit. <laughs> but you can basically see where the farming is in the United States, right? Yeah, These are no. all the flyover yeah, states, big farming areas. For sure. Uh, they have the biggest nitrate contamination. We have a pretty good chunk of it, and that's, you can see we where do. all the cattle ranches are. We do. You know? So, yay for you. Even Florida, that's crazy. Yeah, well, who knows what happens in Florida. Yeah. Do you hear that they're getting a divorce from Disney in Florida? What? Yes. <laughs> what does that mean? So Disney, it's like its own city. It has its own like special city. And Disney this, World? Like yeah, Disney World. And the state of Florida is like telling them they can't do it anymore. So they're like divorcing themselves from Disney. Yeah, I know. Anyway, that's Disney. a digression. They, really, they want their own city now, huh? That's crazy. Well, no, no, no. They had their own city. Oh, they actually had And the had state one. of Florida wants it back. Oh, I, okay. I yeah, see. Opposite, they they opposite. want it back. Okay, okay, okay. Anyway, as that's a digression. crazy. Which leads us back to Moon Knight, which leads us back to Dune. So see, look at this. It came full circle. It came full, it came circle. full circle. This is the arsenic contamination. Look where the highest level of arsenic contamination is. Do you know where that is? You know where, you know where that is. Geography might not be your strong suit, but you know exactly where that is. <laughs> you see That is Harris County. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god what the hell <laughs> that is harris county right and then you also see where midland is right so you have some pretty significant arsenic contamination water wells are scary <laughs> water wells man no wonder they made a movie about the ring <laughs> <laughs> so what about treatment you mentioned that it needs to be done mm -hmm. um you can do chloramine chlor chloramine chlorine treatments and it's not the chlorine used for your pool do not do that you'll make yourself sick yeah but a chlorine treatment can be dropped in it can get rid of bacteria and odor but the problem with the chlorine treatment is it's really temporary it doesn't actually fix what's causing the problem so if you're having an issue with constant contamination of your well you really need to figure out what is causing that problem and in some cases it means that your well pump is old or out of date and you need to replace the parts sometimes it's just because you're in a bad 
area. Yeah. And also big reminder, I'm going to say this again, if your well pump gets flooded, so the water level goes above the pump, then your well is automatically contaminated. So you, you basically need to, you actually, in extreme cases, they have to take apart the whole thing and clean each individual part of it. That's horrible. I know. I'm so like. I'm put off. I'm put off. I'm still not over the baby Jessica having her head, like her leg up against her forehead. Thank God she can't remember anything. You know how much therapy you would need? PTSD. That's crazy. I should have done a video of baby Jessica as our opener. Maybe you shouldn't. I don't want to scar you. No, yeah, that's scary. I don't want to be scarred. More than we already are after after this episode, but um <laughs> so I mentioned the grading already. So you need to make sure your well yeah. is graded. That means it needs to be a little bit higher than the area around it. So it doesn't like pool in. Yes, exactly. Okay. Same with house grading. Did we do we did an episode on grading and drainage, didn't we? I feel like in the in the far past. I think so. I'm gonna check. I'm like, I don't even know. We've done so many. Mm-hmm. At this point, I'm like, I, I don't know. remember. Maybe, I think we did. This would be episode 34, I think. I don't remember. Right, anyway, you look that up. Yeah. Standing water around your well can lead to mosquitoes, water damage, rot. Um, it can also allow chemicals and contaminants to flow into your well better. We did. We did do it. Yeah, and yeah. we also did one about arsenic, so. Yes. Both, both so of those. So you can always, I love how this show, like, we can reference other episodes sometimes. Yeah, no. So. Yeah, so we have an episode on both of those, but. Anyway, make sure you're grading in drainage, and also make sure your drains are not running into your well. So your house drains mm-hmm. need to be pointed away from the well. Like the outside ones? Yeah, the outside okay. drains, yeah. If you have French drains, they need to be really far away from the well. Uh, again septic system 50 feet away yeah. french drains far enough you away you gotta have a big piece of land huh? you need it yeah i mean i mean yeah if you're out in the country it makes right? sense right yeah so i'm like everything has to be so so far so who regulates the wells wells in texas are regulated by the texas water development board that's the twdb my best best texan accent i can oh yeah the twdb um so interesting thing about the TWDB is it only regulates wells, not the actual water coming in the wells. Yeah. That's weird. I know. So it also um, provides a lot of resources to well water owners. So if you need to do a massive renovation of your well, you can actually apply for grants or loans from oh, the TWDB. Yeah. That's nice. They got to change their name though, because you said it has nothing to do with water. Yeah. So I'm like, I know. It should be the well. <laughs> the water management is done at the local level. Oh. through what's called a groundwater conservation district or GCD. And these GCDs have the authority to regulate the spacing of wells and the production from wells. Your wells need to be licensed in the state of Texas. That's good though. Yes. I feel like that's good. Anybody can, you don't need permission to sink the well, but once you've sunk the well, you need to register it. Okay. And that's how I got that exact number. From, yeah, because they know. Because okay. you can actually go to a database and look up how that's many cool. wells. So when I taught this class in Conroe, which if you're not from Texas, it's north of Houston, mm-hmm. um, people were saying like, oh yeah, I know a bunch of people who have unregulated wells. <gasps> good, good old boys just go out there and sink wells when they buy property. Um, that sounds very unsafe. Yes, yes. Like, that is how baby Jessica's fall in the well. Yeah. I don't know. I don't actually know. Yeah, we don't know, but, but I feel but like still, that, that's, that's, that's scary. I would not trust that. So here's a picture of all the GCDs in Texas. There's a lot oh. of them. Yeah. Wow. I know there's quite a bit. Um, and I sometimes know the name of the one we're under and sometimes don't. And right now I, I don't know. It's okay. I, I, sometimes it's in my brain. Sometimes it's not in my brain. It's, it's one of those, but moments. there's a lot of them. How about yeah. that? So how does the home inspector, you know, home inspectors in the state of Texas can inspect water wells. We can, it's part of section six, which is the optional section, which means we can charge extra money. Ooh. Yes. Um, and basically they're going to operate two fixtures simultaneously, which means they're going to turn on two faucets in the house to make sure there's good water pressure. Mm-hmm. They do not have to do the water testing. They can, we don't because it's a headache. Yeah. My thing, if you want a water test in Texas, just go to your local testing plant, get the case. You can do it yourself. It only costs 25 yeah. bucks. I'm pretty sure you could even order one online. Like, no, you have to oh, go. Oh, you have to go because, to the place. Yeah. Because it's oh. a specific thing. Oh, and here's okay, where okay. I go crazy. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. There's a line in it. So it's a little cup. It's a specimen cup, mm-hmm. but not like the cup you pee in at the doctor's office. Okay. It's like a it's like a thing. There actually might be one floating around the detrius of this office. It's possible. Um, so there's a line on it. 
And you cannot feel to the line. You cannot feel below the line. You have to feel just over the line. Just, o- o- just over. If you don't fill it up, they won't, right? They won't take the sample. They have just to go back. over the line. If you go too much over the line, they'll be like, nope. What the heck? It is the stupidest. You stupid. <laughs> Why have a line? Why have a line? Have you gone through this or? Yes. <laughs> Can you tell that I have PTSD? I was about to, it sounds like you've been through this. Like <laughs> Before we stopped doing water well tests, guess who did the water well test? Because it was so much work for the home inspector because you have to drive out there, take the test and then drive it back. Oh, yeah. So that's it made a lot more work. sense for Jesus. me to just do it. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Oh my God. Never again. This is, that's almost triggers me as much as baby Jessica. Almost. Yeah, I could tell. I was like, yeah. it sounds like she's done it. <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't There's go a well. reason we don't do it anymore, okay? Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Some of us are there, it's sanity. <laughs> too damn busy to go around trying to get this exact fill. Oh my that's, God. That's, that's insane. <laughs> it is insane. And why have a line? Okay. Anyway. <laughs> There's more to the Trek inspection, though. Okay. Uh, they're going to inspect the type of pump and the storage equipment. They're going to look for the proximity of the septic system. They're going to look for deficiencies in water pressure. Um, and they're going to examine any accessible con- equipment and look at the wellhead for any uh, improper drain- grading and drainage. So some basics there. Yeah. Uh, they're not required to open up or remove or touch anything below ground, but that's normal for home inspectors in Texas. Mm-hmm. They're not required to determine the re- reliability of the water supply, which again, we don't have to take the test. And they're also not required to locate or verify underground water leaks, which is, that's pretty obvious. Yeah, I feel. that makes sense. So who works on wells? In the state of Texas, we have a license called master driller and pump installer it's under the texas department of licensing and regulations um and those are the people who work on wells interesting yeah um if you currently live in a home you could hypothetically do your own work on the well but i wouldn't recommend it yeah i wouldn't yeah unless you're like a professional but yeah septic companies home inspectors and septic companies can do well inspectors inspections excuse me but when it actually comes to the parts and maintenance you need that license someone who's licensed yeah 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 um oh here's the water testing here's the form you got to fill out there's a form yeah wow i'm glad you have to be licensed though that's good yeah yeah i mean i feel like there's a lot of things we can just do whatever in texas yeah because there there definitely is and we've talked about a lot yeah there's it's definitely like, you don't is. need a license i'm like oh, of course <laughs> so anyway how are you feeling um a little scarred i am never moving out to the country <laughs> never owning a water well or a septic system if you have one you know that good on you me i'm out i'm good so your mom doesn't <laughs> have a water well no she's know. on city water i felt like she lived in the country because she has chickens doesn't she yeah yeah well the place they do live is very country i guess but um <laughs> It's a small town, so I'm sure they got some kind of water system going. <laughs> you should ask her. Yeah, because I know she does not have a water well. Look, she does not. Okay. For sure. But I'm, I'm curious now. Maybe I will ask her. <laughs> like, do you have a septic I assume system? she did because, like, you had mentioned that she has land and stuff. Yeah. It's not, it's like, not, like, she has neighbors. Like, it's like a neighborhood. So it's like. So it's like unincorporated land. It's not like yeah, straight up. Yeah. I always envisioned her living in, like. Yeah, yeah, no, no, like, no. She, she has dog lots types. of neighbors, so yeah, oh, okay. for sure. It's like okay. a neighborhood, so I'm like, I don't think she has a water well, but no, I would assume the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is, um, yeah, very country. Um, so is it time for credits? It's time for credits, and credits are going to be choppy because I forgot to add my references. So let me pull them up real quick. No worries, no worries. So, um, music by Kevin McLeod of Incomtech. We know this. Mm-hmm. The references kind of came from all over the place. There's this uh, website called classroom.com that actually helps teachers prepare for lessons. And that's where I got a lot of the history of the water well because it's on a bunch of different ancient societies and stuff. And I did use Wikipedia actually to fill in some of the blanks. Mm -hmm. Hey, don't. Remember when we were in school and teachers yeah, were like, Wikipedia yeah. is so bad. I was about to say that. I don't believe that. No, that like, was garbage. They have a very strict editing policy at yeah. Wikipedia. And you have to have references. No, yeah, they're all at the bottom. Like yeah. The references are all at the bottom. In, in not school, they'd it. be like, don't use Wikipedia. You're not allowed to use Wikipedia. I would still use it. I'm not going to lie. I would still use it, but. 
I would use it as a starting point yeah. and then like use the references. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah, I would I would still use it. I mean F whatever. public school. I got a degree. Um um it worked out. <laughs> we are both perfectly fine exactly <laughs> you know who's fine we are yeah you know who's not fine those teachers because it's terrible to be a teacher unfortunately yeah yeah for sure anyway uh check us out on youtube at a action home inspection group houston on facebook and on instagram at home inspector underscore texas and on tiktok at houston home inspector our next topic is a doozy it's hvac systems Oh, I feel like that one might be lo- long. That I feel was, like there definitely that has really... to be history behind that. Yeah. Like, well, I, actually, I don't know about history because it's a relatively recent invention. Yeah, I guess so. But um, I feel like there's a lot of technical stuff no, we have to discuss. For sure. When I teach that class, it's actually kind of a slog for me because it's all technical. And honestly, HVAC systems are so insanely complex. People apprentice for years to work on HVAC systems. So for me to condense it into a one hour class was very difficult. It's like, this is just the surface layer. I feel like they definitely are complicated. They're very complicated. And when they go out, it ruins your life. So what's worse, not having water or not having AC? I think it, I mean, I think think you're going to last. I don't know if it's in Houston, I think you're going to die about the same rate. You probably die faster without AC. <laughs> but it, if it's hot, you could just like, and you have water, you could just refresh yourself with water. It's true. You, you can just sit like, in like a kiddie pool. Yeah. You know, like no AC though. So, you know, they don't have AC in Hawaii and a lot of places don't have AC. No, in yeah. In Puerto Rico, um, the AC is all like, it's not like a central AC. Yeah. It's like, it's you know, like, like the one box. on the window. Yeah. You know, that's what they got. And Which is, is crazy because Puerto you Rico is all hot. The, you get all the, yeah, we have all the windows open. Like, the fans are going in every room. That's how it is. <laughs> uh, I mean, obviously places in Hawaii do have AC. I no, should yeah. have said no, they yeah. don't have it. But a lot of apartments don't. No, yeah, yeah. So uh, our friends would fill a kiddie pool up and then put their lawn chairs around the kiddie pool and then put their feet in the kiddie pool. And that's how they would cool no, down. Oh, yeah. In Puerto Rico, like, well, of course there is AC. But like, like in, if you go to the mall, like, it's fine, you know. <laughs> But you got to be rich, I guess, to have like yeah. a central AC in your house. Because like everywhere that I've gone, everyone has the AC on the window and then they got all the fans. It's like, Well, I guess if you're near the coast, you're relying on the breeze because there is a good like coastal. No, yeah, usually the windows are open. It's you know? a good coastal breeze. But inland, I imagine it gets really, really. No, yeah, it's definitely hot. Yeah. For sure. Well, and we'll discuss that next time and mm-hmm. more. I'm Mary. And I'm Isis. And we're the homegirls. And you should watch Moon Knight on Disney+. Plus. I'm going to. All right. All right. (laughs) See you next time.